back-to-back seven and six campaigns for Kentucky and Mark Stoops in 2022, 2023, raising some expectations. People want more, and I don't blame them. Uh, but what is going to be a successful season in 24 for the Kentucky Wildcats? And Mark Stoops. I am your host, Dave Schmidt, coming at you here from the SEC Unfiltered Platform. But let's be honest, Mark Stoops brought these expectations on himself. I'm not blaming Mark Stoops, but I think seven and six without some big marquee wins outside the Louisville uh, rivalry, which is fantastic. You keep winning that game. That's awesome. But I think people want some more. Some people want some wins against Tennessee. Like they had some opportunities last year. Let's beat Clemson in the Gator Bowl when, we're, when we got them on the ropes. I think people are kind of mi- kind of missing that. Um, we have some new key pieces coming into this program. Can they get over that hump? And I'm here to tell you what will be a successful season in Kentucky for 2024. Now, first, let me preface this by saying I think for teams kind of like Kentucky, Auburn, Arkansas, Florida – that are obviously, I think, going to really compete for the SEC title this year. And I'm talking about anywhere from 10 to 12 regular season wins. When I'm talking about these teams that I'm thinking a successful season will be six to eight wins, there's got to be a little bit more context to this as well. So I'm going to give you three pieces if I'm a Kentucky fan I would like to see outside of just your regular, hey, I'm going to give you six, seven, eight wins. That's success. First, quarterback play. Kentucky fans may be screaming at the top of their lungs when they hear me say this. Quarterback play. Let's let's. Let it be a consistent position for the first time in a few years. You got Brock Vandergriff, the transfer coming in from Georgia, who's going to be a threat in the run game, can make all three levels, make all the throws to all three levels, was a five star signee for Georgia. Uh, I think on the only two five star signees they've signed, why Kirby Smart's been in Georgia, him and Justin Fields, but also bringing Bush Hamden, new OC from Boise State. Uh, he had Taylor, Taylor Green at Boise State. Utilized him in the run game with his legs. I think Brock Vandergriff will be similar. This is the first time Kentucky's had a quarterback that I think his legs will be a massive strength. I don't know, Will Levis and even Devin Leary at times on like third and seven. If the pocket broke down, they could pick it up and go get it. I'm not including that. I'm saying this design plays to help Brock Vandergriff utilize his legs. Also, they have weapons on the outside. Dane Key, Barry and Brown. I think they're gonna be, they're, there's going to be some opportunities there for Kentucky to kind of maybe – Look a little different on offense than what Kentucky fans are looking for a little bit. Also, I like I like the running back room. It's not Ray Davis, but you got two guys. Excuse me for, this, for mispronouncing the name most likely here. But the NC State transfer Demi Sumo Carne Bay. Then I think the Ohio State uh, transfer back up at relieve Travian Henderson at times. The Demonte Tranium. Uh, I think he's. I, I think they're serviceable back there for sure. I think they're serviceable back there for sure. Uh, but a quarterback play, it needs to be consistent. That's what I'll be looking forward to. So I'm far up to see what Bush Hamden and Brock Vandegrift, those two combinations can do together. Then second, let's get the big blue wall back going. Let's, let's get the big blue wall back to expectations. They're bringing a new offensive line coach coming over from Alabama. has been at Kentucky before, Eric Wolford. And I think I like some key pieces on this line. Marquis Cox, Jagger Burton, Gerald Mincy, all played in the SEC. I'm not saying it's got to be the best offensive line that Mark Stoops has had. He's had some solid ones. But let, let's get it back a little bit. Let's stop getting the pre-snap penalties. Let's stop getting uh, in second and longs where they're drive killers and you're putting your quarterback in bad spots. I think if the big blue wall can get going, that'll go hand-in-hand hand with the consistent quarterback play. So we got those two. Then finally, going to the other side of the football. I really like this front seven for Kentucky. I think they only lose one starter in their front seven. They six out of the seven starters back. Deion Walker, that leading off with him, and probably you'll hear his name early. We're in NFL draft season. Last night was the first round. You may hear Deion Walker early in the first round, early or late in the first round, late uh, early second uh, this time next year in 2025. Josiah Hayes right next to him. I think J.J. Weaver, one of those outside linebacker spots. Derek Pop Jackson as well. And then one of the more under-the-radar Transfer portal additions. Jamon Dumas Johnson, the Georgia transfer, who played a lot for Georgia but was banged up. I think he's one of the more underrated pieces on an SEC defense that we're not talking about enough. So I really like this front seven. Want to see it again uh, for Brad White enforce their will. I think it's there. I think it's gonna be a real opportunity to stop the run, get to the pa- get to the passer, affect him. So I'm fired up for Kentucky. I, 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 there's one of more confident groups I'm in is this front seven. So outside of just your basic win total, if I'm a Kentucky fan. Defining success in 2024. I want to see consistency in the quarterback play for the first time in three years. Eric Wolford's coming back. Let's get that offensive line back to respectable ability. And it's been struggling the last two years. That's why the quarterback play has been inconsistent. Let's get that going. Then the front seven, hey, let's carry us on defense. We're going to have some learning curves in the back end. But defensively, 
the front seven should be fine. Again, led by Deion Walker Jr. and I think one of the more under the radar transfer portal additions in Jamon Dumas Johnson. But from a schedule standpoint, because this is why you're here, you came for a direct raw schedule response here. So I'm going to show it to you. Bringing up the 2024 schedule of the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's get to it. Leading off, I think it's very similar to Kentucky, uh, or sorry, Arkansas, South Carolina, and Florida in these videos you've seen. I hadn't done South Carolina yet, but I kind of figured that. So I should say Arkansas, Florida, uh, teams like that, that's in, in Auburn, those six to eight win teams. I think a lot of them got to start three and one, got to get some positive momentum. They lead off with Southern Miss. That should, you should win that game, need to win that game. Then South Carolina, you playing South Carolina, opening up SEC play at home, both teams are going to need this. Shane Beamer, Mark Stoops, both guys are going to need to win this. Then you go, you host Kentucky, so your first four at home. You get Ohio for you head to Ole Miss at Bald Hemingway, a place you went two years ago that you probably should have won. So three and one before you're heading to Bald Hemingway to play Ole Miss, you need to be three and one. Probably Southern Miss, South Carolina, and Ohio. I mean, if you want to throw Georgia there somehow, they lose South Carolina, beat Georgia, sure. Just got to get to three and one. But I think Southern Miss, South Carolina, Ohio, most would agree is the way to that. At Ole Miss will be tough. But if you could somehow be three and two heading your bye week with a very – Winnable three-game stretch. I mean, coming off the bye week, Vanderbilt at home, at Florida, Auburn at home. If you can get two out of three there, you're setting pretty. At Tennessee will be tough. Kentucky always traditionally struggles with that game. But then they got a bye week, Murray State, uh, Racers at home, at Texas, it'll be tough. And then Louisville at Kroger Field, a team you've had success against the last four years. So that'll be interesting from that standpoint. I mean, I think you got four legitimate losses, you could say. Georgia at Ole Miss. At Tennessee and at Texas, you feel pretty good about saying that. Now, they may go steal at Tennessee, but, again, I think they probably would maybe drop one at Florida or Auburn. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, four losses, I feel solid for Kentucky right there. Not uh, Nine wins, I would have a hard time seeing for Kentucky. So, like I said, ceiling eight, four, six. I don't think this is an awful schedule because I think Southern Miss should be a win. Ohio should be a win. Vanderbilt should be a win. Murray State should be a win. And you know Mark Stoops. And then they're going to get Louisville, one of at Florida, Auburn, uh, in South Carolina, if not two. So I think they're going to get to six. They're going to get to six. I think six is the floor. Eight's the ceiling. Realistically speaking here, guys, I think eight wins in those three things I mentioned. Consistent quarterback play. The big blue wall coming back, which I think all go hand in hand. And that six out of the seven Returning front seven starters, I think, is going to be big. I want to see some improvement out of that. If you do that, if you see consistent quarterback play, if you see some development with Eric Wolford coming back on that offensive line, on that front, I think you kind of got to be fired up about that from an offensive standpoint. You have enough weapons on the outside in the running back room. I know Ray Davis left. Throw in Jordan Dingle, the tight end position. He can help a lot. Went to the portal. Now he's back. He's going to be in Lexington this year. Uh, And then I think the front seven is a very underrated group with one of the more underrated transfer portal additions in – um, Jamon Dumas Johnson from Georgia, who's a good player, went healthy. So I think schedule's not tough. That's why I said ceiling eight. I think I think the ceiling, the ceiling and the three keys that I mentioned will be key for Kentucky in 2024. I, I think anything less than any of that, I mean, seven, sure. But if you go seven and six again, it's not bad. I would say solid season, but we're talking about success, successful season. And this is kind of a compliment to – Mark Stoops and what he's done at Kentucky, just raising those expectations. We're going seven and six, losing to Clemson in a close game and an ACC power in Clemson. I know some people, well, they've dropped the last year. Well, traditionally, the last five, seven years, Clemson's been the, the team of the ACC. Seven and six, losing the close Gator Bowl to Clemson. People aren't fired up about that. And I think that's a compliment to Mark Stoops and what his and his staff has done at Kentucky. But again, the, the bar, the expectations there, I like a little mix, though. I like what Bush Hamlin's going to do. I like the addition of uh, Brock Vandergrift. I think his ability in the run game is going to help Kentucky look a little differently. Completely, not, not 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 too far away. I mean, Mark Soup's a little bit like Jim Harbaugh. He wants to establish the run game and win at the point of attack. He does. That's what he wants to do. He's going to use Caddis. He's going to use Dingle at the tight end spot. They want to establish the run game. Um, so I think he's going to do what he wants to do. But I also think having the quarterback with the ability to be in the design run game, which you hadn't had with Will Levis or Devin Leary, is going to be key. Again, factor off the line has got to come together for that to work. And like I said, the defense, I like the front seven. But So for Kentucky, for me, successful season, eight wins, bring those three things all together. 
I think it's a fantastic season for Kentucky fans. I think the schedule's manageable from that standpoint. But again, I am your host, Dave Shumate, coming at you here from the SEC Unfiltered Platform. Like, subscribe, hit the notification. It's SEC all the time, baby, 24-7, 365. I appreciate you joining us on this segment.